Iran, a mysterious land, a secret and exotic Persian culture, rich in the ancient traditions of literature and trade. A country of magnificent monuments, modern cities, and astonishing natural beauty. Home to a surprising wilderness of wild habitats that look European and others that feel distinctly African. Iran is a crossroads for animals from different continents, making it a unique refuge for a rich diversity of wildlife. This is the story of a journey into the heart of the unknown Middle East to reveal wild animals and wild places that must be protected. Benny Rebel was born in Iran. He left his native country at the age of 19 and is now a renowned wildlife photographer and conservationist in Germany. Benny is returning to Iran for the first time in 20 years to rediscover the country of his childhood memories. His aim is to explore, document, and raise the profile of Iran's little known wildlife. With the help of technology, he plans to capture images of unusual and rare creatures. For the next six weeks, Benny will explore a country three times the size of France. He's traveling with his Iranian friend Hamid Naziri, a wildlife filmmaker and expert in the field. From the capital, Tehran, they will travel to the dry and arid south of the country. For Benny, this is a journey with a serious mission. I would like to take some photographs of the unknown uh, wildlife of Iran to show the people which treasure they have in their own country to mobilize them to protect these this all beauties of nature. They will need to be self-sufficient on this trip and have packed all essentials. Iran still has little tourism, and more than half the country is arid scrubland and desert. But it does have 19 national parks and over 100 nature reserves. This vast wilderness used to be home to Asiatic lions and Caspian tigers, both now extinct. Benny's dream is to find an endangered leopard or cheetah. First stop is Haftad Gola National Park close to Benny's old hometown, Arak. It's a good start. Benny has spotted two fluffy, long-eared owl chicks. As a child, Benny used to climb here and can remember some of the rough pathways through the rocks. If he is careful and quiet, he should be able to get quite close to the naive chicks. Small rodents and reptiles live among the rocks. Perfect food for hungry owls. This skink actually had a lucky escape. It only sacrificed its tail to the owls. A natural break allows it to drop off, to be left as a wriggling decoy. The lost part of the tail will regrow again within weeks. The young owls have retreated into the safety of a cave. The owls are young and very confident, and Benny quickly gets to work to make the most of this chance. Mm -hmm. 
the young owls are just starting to grow the distinguishing tufts that give them their name. There are eight different species of owls in Iran, and there is ample food for them all. These small rodents look like hamsters, but they are in fact pikas. They are busy gathering leaves and grasses that they dry in stacks in the sun and then store in their burrows for food and bedding. This can be dangerous work. Kestrels are on the prowl. Camouflage and knowledge of the rocky crevices puts the pikas at an advantage. The rocky terrain in the south of the country is harsh and inhospitable. Few animals can live in this hot and sparse landscape. The spur-thighed tortoise is a robust survivor it has lived here for centuries. Its leathery skin and hard shell protects it against the heat and the many thorny plants. Benny knows that the tortoise is likely to head for the wild flowers and positions himself accordingly. These blooms and leaves are a soft treat, high in moisture, that the tortoise can store in his bladder. It's hard to imagine that for a short period every year, this arid landscape is transformed into a sea of flowers. This rocky land was once a garden of Eden. Old stone tablets inscribed 300 years ago by order of the Persian emperors are testament to a different age. The eloquent poems of these mighty rulers tell of a once rich diversity of plant and animal life. The old kings have found a paradise in this place, but unfortunately, they have destroyed it. The old uh, wildlife of this place is nearly gone because of their hunting skill. Increased agriculture and growing settlements have led to a decline in large animals, but smaller creatures like the Agama lizard are still abundant. These cold-blooded lizards thrive in the dry heat and can tolerate temperatures higher than most reptiles. They are solar-powered and bask on the rocks to absorb the sun's heat. But Benny is still keen to find some of the larger and rarer inhabitants of this area. Somewhere out there live cheetahs and leopards. Animals like these Persian ibex are surely perfect prey for big cats. These nimble-footed creatures are the ancestors of our domestic goats, and they are perfectly adapted to their perilous rocky lifestyle. Benny needs to be well camouflaged so as not to scare them off.
Both males and females have impressive horns and use them in battle to determine their place within the herd. Traditionally, ibex have featured strongly in Persian art, a symbol of strength, elegance, and beauty. Once shot for their fur, meat, and horns, they are now protected, and in the national parks, their numbers are on the increase once more. But urban concentrations are growing and sprawling into the deserts. Isfahan is an ancient city that in the 16th century was the capital of Persia. It has grown from a modest oasis dwelling to become the third largest city in Iran and home to several million people. The ancient Mughal emperors were well known for their passion for gardens. And still today, there are many green places the city square is one of the biggest in the world, a reminder of the wilderness outside. Old and new seem to blend together effortlessly in modern Iran, but the ancient ways still live in the people's hearts. The Imam Mosque is a masterpiece of Persian architecture and a sacred place for the Persian people. Birds are a sign of good luck, and people maintain a close relationship with them. Persian high flyer pigeons are bred for their aesthetic appearance and endurance flying. Just after dawn, the pigeon breeders drive their prize birds out of the cages to showcase their aerial skills. For Benny, this is a trip back to his childhood, when he used to raise these birds himself. Although gambling is illegal in Iran, high bets are placed on the birds. Cars and even homes are at stake. The aim is to have as many pigeons as possible in the air for a set period of time. The winner is the breeder with the highest average flying time. The tumbling display is a specialty of this breed, and has earned them the other name, tumbler pigeons. Each of these birds is valued at a few hundred dollars. It's worth catching any strays. This man has spotted another man's prize pigeon, so he quickly puts his own birds into the air. He hopes that his flock will tempt the lone pigeon to join them. was right. The strange bird joins his flock. Attracted by the offer of food, the flock lands again. And amongst them is the new pigeon. His plan has worked. The pigeon thief quickly puts his own mark on the kidnapped bird. Now it is his property. All's fair in love and war. The freshly acquired pigeon will not be allowed to fly until it has been well integrated into the new flock. Its wings are tied with string to prevent it from escaping home. Pigeon stealing is common in Iran, so this breeder safeguards his property with surveillance cameras. In the meantime, the true owners of the kidnapped bird have noticed that one of their prize pigeons is missing. It's a painful loss. Not all missing birds are stolen. Some fly so high that they can't find their way home again.
Benny takes a few last pictures for old time's sake, but it's time to track down wilder creatures. In the far south of the country, near the city of Shiraz, lies the Bamu National Park. It's home to the sand fox and the elusive leopard that Benny longs to see. Tourists are not common here, so the animals are shy. He'll have to be lucky to spot big cats, but with expert help, he can find other fascinating creatures. Benny has been joined by a local snake expert, Ali Salimi, who knows exactly where to look for reptiles. This arid, rocky terrain is perfect habitat for snakes. During the day, the animals are likely to be hiding under rocks and boulders. Benny wants to raise the profile of snakes that are much hated in Iran. He hopes to find a snake that will win the hearts of the people. Another large boulder. The snake specialist lifts it carefully to reveal a surprise. This isn't an earthworm. It's a tiny snake. This miniature snake isn't a youngster. At 30 centimeters, it's a fully grown black-headed ground snake. It isn't poisonous, feeds entirely on insects, and is strong enough to overpower a scorpion. Snakes big and small are symbols of evil in Iran, and most locals believe that only a dead snake is a good snake. But Benny and Ali are delighted by this exquisite creature, a real ambassador for snake kind. Nature reserves are a safe refuge for snakes. They are home to over 70 species, of which less than half are venomous. One of them is the curiously named Montpellier snake. Two meters long and with poison fangs, this is a formidable hunter. Pikas are always on the lookout for predators and neighbors warn each other at the slightest sign of danger. Snakes are one of their main enemies. But today will not be a good hunting day for snakes. The peace and quiet is about to be disrupted. Benny has a plan. He is assembling the parts of a remote-controlled helicopter that can carry a small onboard camera. There have been some engineers in, in Germany helping me uh, to build this system, and actually this is unique. It's built for me. You can't buy it as it is uh, anywhere. So um, it's like my child. Flying this octocopter requires a lot of skill and technology. A special pair of glasses allows Benny to look through the camera's viewfinder. This is the helicopter's first test flight to see whether its fragile navigation system has survived transportation. This delicate, bizarre-looking machine looks like an alien spaceship in this stark landscape. 
The helicopter has passed the flying test, but it may have noise issues. A praying mantis seems to be one of the few animals that is undisturbed by the commotion. It carries on with the business of ambushing passing shield bugs. Tonight will be peaceful, but tomorrow Benit plans to try again. Dawn the next day, and the ants are already busy in the early morning sunshine. The tiny creatures assiduously carry grasses and seeds into their larders. Benny has been busy too. He is hoping to get close to some of the more robust mountain residents, the mouflon, or wild sheep. There isn't much cover and little chance of hiding the equipment. The vigilant animals have already spotted the photographer. All eyes are on Benny. The males keep a safe distance. One animal is particularly nosy. It was probably once a domestic animal that has now joined the wild herd. The spectators seem ready for takeoff. In other parts of the world, Benny has managed to get some unusual animal pictures with this equipment. But will it work here? The only shots he manages to get with his flying camera are of the nosy animal that seems unfazed. The strange machine makes the other animals very nervous. The octocopter lands and Benny has to come down to earth with a bump too. Time to pack up. Benny is disappointed, but failures come with a job. To use the octocopter in Iran is very difficult because in Iran there is always windy and uh, the animals are very shy and they run away. Benny and his companion are not downhearted. They still have big plans. They're off to the hot southern part of the country. This is where they have the best chance of finding big cats, particularly cheetah. But they have a long journey ahead of them. Bamu National Park wasn't always a nature reserve. Old gravestones reveal that people still lived here until 150 years ago. The inhabitants of this area probably left because they couldn't find enough food in the sparse landscape. All the large prey was poached out of existence. Large mammals were left with little food too, and many, like the tiger, were hunted to extinction. But today, paramilitary troops are responsible for protecting the animals. Iran's national parks are guarded by an anti-poaching squad that are dedicated to the task.
The areas these men need to patrol are vast, and their equipment is basic. But their presence is making a difference. They use confiscated motorbikes to patrol the park and pay for petrol out of their own pockets. Less and less poachers are able to operate now. This network of trained park rangers is ensuring that rare and endangered animals have a chance to recover and survive here. Antelope and other ungulates are popular trophy for hunters, and some illegal hunting still occurs. But now there is a growing conservation movement within the country not least because of the efforts of men who will even risk their lives to fight the poachers. Hunting is a long-standing and ancient tradition of the Persian Empire. Historical carvings and mosaics decorate palace walls, depicting the mass slaughter of wild animals. But for 3,000 years, the Persian rulers have also created more peaceful havens, like the splendid gardens of Eden, places to study and seek inspiration. The word paradise is derived from the Persian language and is used to describe a man-made oasis created in the desert. The elegant gardens created by the Mughal emperors are inspiration for modern gardens in Iran today. Flower beds are cared for with great pride in Iran cities, and they are mini havens for smaller wildlife. The gardens are also used for growing fruit and vegetables. The multiple fruits of the wild mulberry are particularly popular because they are juicy and sweet. They are known as chartout, or the king's mulberry. These tasty treats are eagerly collected and consumed on the spot. They are a welcome addition to the menu of the less well-off households. Some are taken home and dried to be eaten later. The colorful Persian gardens offer a peaceful retreat for all. Beyond the lush cities, vast sand dunes spread across southern Iran like the Sahara Desert. The wind creates dramatic sculptures out of the fine sand grains. and the desert heat creates many twisters that whirl across the land. But nothing compares with the strength of the massive sandstorms that bury all life. The southern parts of Iran are hot and arid. The animals living here struggle to survive. A crested lark has found one of the few remaining pools of water. Others are quick to join. Hornets drink their fill. and butterflies put out their long mouth parts to probe for salt in the moist soil. The 
waterhole is alive with activity. A wasp fashions perfect balls from the wet mud to build its nest. In the parched landscape, these pools are honey pots that attract all sorts of animals, even larger ones. This is where Benny needs to search for big cats. It looks like a fresh leopard track, um, so it might be from last night. This is very exciting news. So he decides to stake out the pool to capture images of any nighttime visitors. He sets up a camera trap with an infrared motion sensor. Animals visiting the pool at night will automatically trigger the device. A final test to check that the camera is working, and Benny retreats to wait. In the cooler temperatures of the night, many animals venture out of their hiding places. Nighttime sounds fill the air. The phantom-like shape and glowing eyes of a hyena pass through the frame. A porcupine takes a leisurely drink. Sadly, no sign of the leopard from the night before. The journey must go on, and Benny and Hamid now move into the eastern part of Iran, to an area that was once part of the old Silk Trail. These vast stone deserts are home to Arabian camels or dromedaries. Their ancestors came from Arabia and Africa and played an important role in Iran's trade and history. Huge caravans of these sturdy camels carried heavy goods across the continent, bringing Islam from the Arabic world into the far east of Asia. Today, the camels are no longer used and are left to roam freely. This desolate area is also guarded by a park ranger, and he is protecting a strange and well-kept secret. It looks like the entrance to a mythical dragon's cave that is full of treasure and the remains of prey. Deeper into the cave, and a closer inspection reveals treasure that looks more like campsite rubbish. How did these objects get to this remote place? A huge accumulation of bones confirmed that the cave has been used for centuries by hyenas, and they have been collecting the rubbish too. An extraordinary behavior that still isn't understood. The bones, however, are an important record of a carnivore in the area, and wild mouflon was definitely on the menu. The mouflon are characteristic animals in this rocky habitat. They are the ancestors of all domestic sheep, and indeed, they interbreed readily with each other. Their curved headgear has always fascinated Persian artists and craftsmen. In the past, their magnificent horns were turned into drinking utensils.
The mouflon live in large herds that the males join during the mating season. The females give birth often to two young and they are well protected within the safety of the herd. This is a secure life in a herd that is faithful to its traditional territory. And every mountain range in Iran has red sheep of a different color with slightly different horns. Benny would like to photograph some of this intimate behavior. But the herd are alert and ready to protect their youngsters. One bold animal allows Benny to approach. It is a promising photographic model. It is certainly not camera shy, and Benny manages to capture some amazingly intimate images. Benny is ready to end this photo shoot, but try telling that to the animal. Wildlife and the Persian culture have always been intimately entwined, and the ancient monuments of Iran are testament to this relationship. Fifty kilometers to the northeast of Bamu National Park lies the ruins of a colossal palace complex. This is Persepolis, heart of the old Persian Empire. Lions and bulls symbolized the power of the empire. These animals represented strength and freedom. These ruins are still alive with wildlife and have been a constant place of shelter for more than 2,500 years. Let us hope that the creatures living now and those set in stone survive as long again. Today, Benny is taking a break away from the desert heat. He is visiting a ranger station. He has heard about an orphaned mouflon sheep there and is going to investigate. It may be his chance to get some really appealing shots. The young mouflon is only three weeks old and is called Bita. It was chased by poachers who broke its back leg with a stick. The broken limb is now bound up. Little Bita was saved by rangers who intercepted the poachers. Now they hope to raise the young sheep with the help of a domestic foster parent a domestic goat. 
<laughs> Benny is enchanted by the delightful youngster. The male goat watches as the orphan is introduced to one of his females. The young animal immediately tries to suckle from its foster mother. It's a good start. The young wolflon is likely to survive and eventually be released back into the wild. The ranger keeps Bita busy, training her muscles, so she'll have a better chance of survival. It's hard to believe in this vast wilderness that living space might be an issue. But the more fertile areas have to be shared. The arid grasslands of Iran are also used by the people for grazing their domestic animals. The large herds of goats and sheep eat what little vegetation there is and leave little for wild animals. The competition for food and water is intense particularly during the hot summer months. Animals and people desperately seek out the last water holes. This precious natural resource originates in the high mountain ranges and it has to be shared too. Cold, clear water is efficiently channeled into a network of underground tunnels that for a thousand years have supplied the larger cities. On its subterranean journey, it remains fresh and cool and emerges again in the heart of the city, as refreshing as when it was first released. Water plays a significant role in the Islamic religion. It's a sign of life, energy, and happiness. Elegant pelicans decorate this ornamental garden. The large birds have had their wings clipped so they can't fly, but they are fed daily. The relationship between people and animals in Iran is a close and ancient one, but it isn't always just for pleasure. These towers are decorative, but others are more functional. This is a pigeon tower over 20 meters high dating back to the 17th century. This astounding architectural maze constructed of bricks and clay can house more than 10,000 pigeons. It's filled with a honeycomb of small roosts for the birds. The arched patterns and zigzagged stones were to prevent snakes from climbing into the holes. The tower's design ensures that the droppings fall to the ground without soiling any birds sitting below. The pigeon guano was traditionally collected and used as fertilizer on the fields. Today, artificial fertilizers have taken over and pigeon guano is no longer needed. The remaining towers are still preserved as historical monuments for tourists and visitors. <laughs> 
Whilst thousands of such towers were constructed all over Iran for pigeons, there were other constructions which were not intended specifically for the birds. Islamic mosques are sacred places of worship. But because pigeons are held in high esteem within Islam, the birds are permitted free reign even here. According to the Holy Quran, it's a Muslim's duty to respect all life on earth, including plants and animals. The religious philosophy that all living things form one big community is also underpinned by the Islamic country's constitution. It encourages a respect of nature and guarantees, at least on paper, some protection of Iran's natural world. Benny's mission is to reinforce this philosophy. If he can raise awareness of Iran's unique wildlife, it will be better protected. He has a tip-off that two very rare animals, the chinkara gazelle and the cheetah, are in the area. The Asiatic cheetah is now critically endangered. Once widespread across the continent, now less than 100 survive, only in Iran. Its prey, like these chinkaras, have been heavily decimated by hunters and their habitat overgrazed. This herd have spotted the cheetah, so the hunt is off. Benny is in luck. By the time he arrives, the cheetah has spotted another opportunity. The hare had little hope of outrunning the fastest mammal on land. For Benny, this is an overwhelming privilege. Capturing images of one of the world's rarest big cats at such close quarters will be critical to the success of his mission. Iran has lost most of its big cats. Lions and tigers are now extinct. Benny is determined that the cheetah should not follow in their steps. Benny savors the last magical moments of his encounter with this magnificent cat. This has fired his determination to continue his quest to discover Iran's many natural habitats and wildlife, and to protect them. <laughs>